Hello everyone! Of course, having seen the title of this video already, and then also the general location, I'm here with a reading vlog for this time, and I'll be reading The Shame by McKenna Goodman. For the next few days, I will be in New York City, which I haven't been to in a really long time, I think for about six years. Actually, right now, I do have some friends coming over to stay with me here in my apartment tonight, and then we're making the drive tomorrow morning. And I thought I'd take you with me, and then hopefully checking out a bunch of cool bookstores that I had planned up, and then also meeting Claire from Claire Reads Books and Matthew from Matthew Sharapa. So that'll be really fun and I'm really excited to meet them for the first time. And the reason I picked The Shame is because I've been wanting to read this for a while and I know that CJ at CJ Reads is really enthusiastic about this book, which is how I heard about it. And I remember that CJ described it with a part of this being in New York, I think, or at least about New York in some way. And it's not very long either, so I thought it was a good book to bring on a trip. But I also recently read a book called None of This is Serious, which is an arc that I read that comes out next month in April. And I've actually been thinking of that book a lot because it also deals in some ways, I think, also the shame apparently being about the internet or something. And also recently having read the Lonely Stories, which I got from Catapult recently, which I think also comes out in April, but between that and then also None of This is Serious, I do have a future video planned of talking about both those books in a sort of dual review kind of way. And maybe with The Shame, it might be able to contribute to that too, but I'm excited to read this and I'll take you along for this vlog. Hello everyone, I don't think I've updated by speaking about anything since getting here in New York, but I'm having a cozy night in in New York in my hotel room while my friends went out to dinner. I haven't been in New York in six years maybe, and I really like New York, I liked visiting, and I've always had like an alternate universe where whenever I was graduating from high school I'd planned to actually move here in that same way that everyone thinks of moving to New York, I'm sure, whenever they're maybe younger or something. And I think, or I would like to think that, I think it would be great to live here to some capacity, maybe for a little while, but in instances like today, which might be a bit blasphemous that I'm having this night in, my friends and I have been doing all the natural stuff, none of the like maybe mainly touristy stuff that maybe someone thinks of with New York, but just basically doing a lot in general. So like uh, bookshops, of course, coffee shops, whatever. And I think with like myself personally, I'm totally one of those people that like gets all the energy zapped out of them if they consistently don't have time to recharge. And I think that's unfortunately what happened to me 
now at this time with this trip. It's really hard to explain other than not making it sound like it's just a matter of feeling tired because it feels somehow like it it's like that it exceeds that. I don't know if anyone's like the same way I would really like to know maybe ways in which you kind of overcome that or maybe to much of like what my friends tell me maybe tell me in a good way maybe I should finally see a therapist or something. And so like I said at the beginning of this reading vlog, I'm reading The Shame. And now I think I'm actually like pretty much halfway through it. This follows a woman as she's fleeing to New York, which again is why I picked this up. And it's very constrained, like it's very suffocating almost, in ways that reminds me a lot of Ferrante with Days of Abandonment. There's a lot of talk about this woman feeling the guilt or maybe the shame of leaving her children and her family, or at least like maybe precursors that make her feel guilty about even wondering about it. Even to the point of where she makes this alter ego of sorts, of where she's trying to research the type of person that the alter ego would be. So it's kind of interesting because the main character doesn't even try to adopt. Like she understands the separation between it not being her so that she can essentially like project herself onto this made up person. This whole concept of reinvention or maybe what if and it's kind of funny even with the idea of what's possibly stereotypical of going away to New York to like start over. It's interesting for the main character because I'm hoping what will happen as I keep reading this is that she has like an epiphany about that. How like that same old saying of you move to New York and start over but whether or not you know if the person you're starting over as is who you really are maybe authentically. In terms of the writing I really like it I think. It's like pretty breezy and like familiar for sure again with Ferrante. Although I am curious because I think the main character here she is really perceptive and has a lot of self-reflection but somehow like my memory or my impression of her as a character isn't really solidified yet. So I feel like she's more of like this amalgamation of a bunch of different characters I've read before but just like a summary of those characters here. I'll probably read a good chunk of that now and then wait for my friends to come back and then celebrate the last day in New York tomorrow. Also in other news with the clips I'm sure you just saw, I met up with fellow booktubers of booktube fame, Matthew Sharapa and Claire Reads Books, and they were great. Matthew and Claire were so nice and so generous of me, like, you know, not really understanding anything about New York and showing me around a couple of bookshops. Yeah, it was just so pleasant and so great, which I'm sure if you watch me that I'm sure you already watch them. I hope if I'm ever in New York again, I'll get to see them the next time. Welcome back from what was probably a really abrupt transition. I actually decided to just go ahead and knock out reading the rest of The Shame. And mostly because I found myself like it really clicking for me as I wasn't nearly finishing it. As we progress through the book into what could be assumed as being the final confrontation of what could have happened based on maybe understanding or at least my expectation being that our narrator meeting this version of Celeste that she's concocted in her mind. And previously I may have described it as Celeste being made up, which is true, but it's on the basis of our narrator like pretty much seeing what would be like an influencer online and just dictating her as who the narrator can project on in terms of who the narrator wishes she could be. And really no surprises in terms of the conclusion of this book with how it ends being very sort of not life lessony, which I think is good, and neither entirely moralizing because I think McKenna Goodman does a really good job at creating this narrator that's able to be like funny in sort of articulating her own need for feeling justified about her behavior. Such as the narrator talking to her husband about how she doesn't want to do this book deal and how she says something like she wishes that he would see the genius of her ability to stick to who she wants to be as an artist. Cycling back, which I think is funny in its own way of our narrator wishing she could have this artistic creative integrity, but at the same time really emphasizing this persona of this Celeste character that she literally is trying to use a model as like 
for one of her future works, like fiction that she wants to write. Perhaps much like in real life, the way that we access the internet and try to create these pedestals of what we try to attain to, I think can get, like, become a really mixed bag. But yeah, I liked this. I think it, like, was really well executed by the time I finished it. But um, in terms of, like, the things I was talking about earlier, with how I was feeling and this idea of, like, energy being zapped out of me, I don't think this book was, like, entirely helpful. Just because it does make me think of, which I guess is good, about the concept of those things again, like, how do we feel authentic to ourselves if we maybe are always trying to create a mirror of our own expectations we put on ourselves. For me at least, like the concept of having a vacation or going on a trip, um, especially New York of all places, it's like my body tries to read like uh, a sense of like my idea of New York versus like what it actually is, but like my brain aware of that and not like trying to romanticize like a million people's lives in this one part of the world that are complete strangers to me. And I think in general too, just the concept, at least for me, knowing that like trips and stuff are so temporary as is, so it's hard for me to feel like I can place myself in something in real time until I reflect on it later, um, which again is probably something I like definitely need to work on. And even the concept of just reading, um, not even reading the shame necessarily, but what it made me think about like uh, how the narrator was to Celeste is perhaps in some ways the concept of like what people say about reading as a way to teleport like against the bad stuff in the world, or at least for me, me trying to read more to feel more like tied down to the real world and not be as daydreamy. I feel like with me saying all of that, I feels like I trapped you in the corner of a party. But regardless of all that kind of stuff, I did like the shame. And I would say overall, I do recommend it, especially the fact that the character is also kind of funny. Describing something as like a sailor having scurvy. I don't know. There's just really funny like offhand descriptions in here that I think really like zap you into paying attention. So it doesn't quite veer into like complete cynicism, but like fleshing out that portrayal of who this narrator is. And I guess with that, that does it for me actually for this vlog. Um, I probably won't film anything else by tomorrow because I feel like I got like some really good clips like already that I'm sure I'll like dump into this thing. So hopefully it's like not too long. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.